As a health information channel with a pointed interest in identifying and taking down health misinformation, we're particularly interested in scientific studies of mis- and disinformation. In May 2024, a set of articles was published in the journal Science that focused on the intersection of misinformation and social media. The results, while preliminary in the grand scheme of things, were really interesting and maybe a little alarming too. And that's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. The first of these articles aimed to measure the impact of Facebook misinformation on people's behavior related to vaccines. Participants were shown either one piece of misinformation about vaccines or a control post containing no such misinformation. Before and after exposure, they were given a series of questions to determine how willing they were to be vaccinated against COVID-19. As we might expect, people exposed to the piece of vaccine misinformation indicated less willingness to receive the vaccination, which did not appear to be associated with how willing they were to get the vaccine before they were exposed to the misinformation. There was also no significant relationship with the participant's gender, age, political party, or even vaccine status. Furthermore, data suggested that misinformation specifically indicating that the vaccine was harmful to health was the only type of content that was consistently related to a person's intent to get the vaccine. Didn't matter if the article was true, false, or misleading, claims that the vaccine was harmful to people's health had a considerable impact on the intention to get vaccinated. Interestingly, they found that entirely false articles published by fringe news outlets were not the driver of these decreased intentions to vaccinate. Instead, the effect was driven by misleading vaccine skeptical information published by more mainstream sources, including highly reputable sources like the Chicago Tribune that were not flagged by fact checkers. The intent to vaccinate in the United States was reduced by nearly three percentage points due to unflagged vaccine skeptical content, likely due to its greater reach. For outright false content, vaccine motivation was reduced by just 0.05 percentage points. The second article examined super shares, a term used for a small number of people with extensive social networks that share the majority of fake news on social media platforms. The researchers identified just over 2,100 of these individuals that accounted for 80% of shared misinformation on Twitter during the 2020 U.S. presidential election. The researchers examined the super shares online influence and sociodemographic characteristics, as well as their posting patterns to determine whether any of them qualified as bots. The resulting data suggested that super shares received more engagement than typical users, were more likely to be older, average age of 58, more likely to be women, and more right-leaning in their politics. They were not defined by any significant differences in income or education, and the analysis did not suggest widespread use of automation, meaning that bots don't appear to be a significant part of the picture here. The super shares comprised only around 0.3% of the sample, but reached over 5% of the sample's registered voters, as well as 20% of the people consuming the most fake news. Taken together, these two studies suggest that the biggest threats in the realm of misinformation are not outright false articles spread by irreputable fringe sources. Instead, Interventions may be better directed at information that is misleading as opposed to blatantly false, published by what would generally be considered a reputable source and not flagged as misinformation on a platform, and then pushed by super shares with large networks. Each of these studies have limitations that deserve careful consideration, including whether or not the population studied is representative of the general population, uncertainty over how the intention to vaccinate translates into actual vaccination, and a lack of inclusivity for all manners in which misinformation is shared. Studies like these, despite such limitations, are critical, though, in laying the groundwork for sorely needed research. Widespread misinformation is terrible for society on so many levels, including health, which is our main concern around here. These studies point us in the right direction for future research and we're looking forward to what comes next. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode and in fact, series we did sponsored by the NIHCM on vaccines. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video. Subscribe down below. Maybe go to patreon.com slash healthcare triage. 
and can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Edward Liljeholm and Joshua Crow, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.